I'm going to give you a tour of the piece of kit I use for diagnosing problems with cars and uh, also motorcycles, ATVs, UTVs. This is not just a scanner for getting the um, codes out of ECUs when your engine management light comes on. This is also bi-directional, it controls all sorts of uh, odds and sods in the ECUs. You can turn things on and off, radiator fans, the lights on the interior of the car, you can control door locks with it, individual headlights, brake lights, individual brake calipers, you name it, it is just the dog's dangly bits. But it's not just a scanner, it's a multimeter, it's an oscilloscope. I'll show you what we got hiding in this box. Hiding in there is a snap on modus. That's the unit. Looks complicated. It's actually very intuitive and very, very simple to use. I'll show you a bit more of that afterwards. That's the unit. In the box, there is... That's the lead you plug into the car, this one. That screws into the top of the unit. That's just a generic OBD2 cable, or EOBD. This lead one half goes into the top of the snap on, the other half goes into another cable. It goes into this a data link. That slot there. It's for specific vehicle identification keys. I'll show you them in a minute. And again, the other half. That goes into the OBD socket on the car, the 16-pin socket that's under the dash. Now then, these are the magic bits on the snap-on throw them on the floor. Every one of them keys has a number on it and every one of them keys is specific to a make or model. That was S34, that was S39, as you can see, I've got the whole set here. There isn't a key missing for this setup. Nothing missing. Every single key. I've even got Polaris specific keys. Honda motorcycles, Yamaha motorcycles, Kawasaki, American, Chevys, GMs. They're all in there. All the Japanese manufacturers, Mitsubishi, High Hyundai's. I've got all the Asian keys, I've got all the European keys. There's nothing missing. And then this is for powering the modus power socket and plug into cigarette lighter. That powers the modus when you're in the car and you've got it plugged into diagnostics. Right, we're going to dive into the box now that complements the modus. I've got bags and bags. There's the probes and all the crocodile clips.
we have more probes, more wires. I've got enough wires here for every single channel on the oscilloscope. We've got there, that's for going round the uh, HT leads and picking up the pulses off ignition. And then we've got, these are specific leads for different manufacturers. Mercedes, Renaults, Alfa Romeos, Fiat. There's boxes and boxes of them. Even down to specifics like this one here. This is 17 pin Mazda. Okay, I always carry a another scan tool which is probably the, it's the first one I plug in actually just to see what codes we've got before we go digging deeper with the uh, snap-on in here we've got the main power supply for it more 12 volt power supply cables crocodile clips all sorts so it's quite a comprehensive kit so that is always will be has been for a long time now my go-to piece of kit for any diagnostics work any electronics work that I'm doing I've not found anything yet to better it because it is so usable Oh, what we got here is some of my diagnostics kit. Snap-on modus is uh, what I use 99% of the time when I'm out in the field and I'm trying to find faults with cars. Let's turn her on. She has been on charge. screen better into focus it's like a boot up that screen isn't always easy to see when you're in the daylight um, so sometimes when you're out on the field and you've got the sunlight in the car and you're trying to read it and you've got the scope on it can be really really hard to read the screen it probably doesn't show up very well on the camera but let's go into the scope and I'll show you what I mean let's pick lab scope let's go four channel Okay, so there's the lab scope. And looking at the camera, to be honest, what you're seeing is what I see when I'm out in the field. It's not amazingly bright. It's okay when you've got no sunlight and there's no reflections on it. It's a great screen. But the moment you've got some reflection on these LCD screens, oh, they are a nightmare. So, when I'm at home, I've got no problems because I always plug the modus into one of the computer screens in the workshop and they use, I work off the computer screen but it's a pain in the neck when you're out in the field so I've been thinking for a long time now I need to have a screen with me when I'm out in the field and I've been looking, I thought I'd just go and buy a 12 volt screen, but they're extortionately expensive. So, I also fly drones 
and we fly first person view when I fly off a, an iPad which is great and again I suffer with the same problem reflections on the screen and then you can lose the helicopter so I got myself thinking I thought I want to combine a screen that I can run either 240 volts if I've got the availability of power or 12 volts if I'm out in the field and I've got the power off a vehicle so I'm going to move the modus and I'm going to open the case zoom out a little bit and unhook So that's my setup. In there I've got a 19 inch Samsung screen. And 600 watt 240, oh, sorry, 12 volt to 240 inverter. I don't actually need 600 watts to power this screen. I only need a hundred but I've got the option now I can use this uh, inverter for power, charging the laptop up powering the laptop charging the iPads up the iPhones whatever I've got all, I've got other options and other things I can do with the inverter I'm gonna hook it all up now and I'll show you how I'm going to use it I'm just going to turn the camera off whilst I do it. This, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, I do have a cast on my arm and I'm trying to do everything one handed at the moment so let's fire this screen up in its box because I've only just built this. Let's pull it down I'll show you. We've picked up on the uh, four screw mounting bolts in the back of the screen. This screen happens to be 75mm spacing, so yeah, I just made myself a little jig off the back of the screen where the holes were. I actually used the lid off a con food container that I got from a takeaway because I could see through it and mark the holes and then I was just a matter of dropping it in, measuring my uh, distances across there. I just went centre to centre, got that. Right, got the same measurement that side, same here, same here, so I've got the screen mounted in the middle. So I'm going to turn, turn it off now, I'm going to connect it to the, uh, the modus and I'll show you how much better it is. Right, it's the first time this screen's been fired up in the box. It has been connected to the modus before so I know it does work. It was connected up in the workshop, but we've got another screen in the workshop now. So I'm going to turn all the power on. And at the moment it is connected to 240 volts because I haven't got 12 volt battery with me at the moment. But that wasn't the idea. The idea was to use it in the car out on the field and use the vehicle to uh, power things up. So the screen's on power the modus up and on comes the modus screen and on comes the screen so to get the camera in a better position yeah That is so much easier to work with when you're out in the field. It's so much nicer to read. Let's compare the motor screen. You can read it, but it's 
nowhere near as nice to read as that. Let's get out of this. And you can see how much easier it is to work with the large screen. Modus is still accessible. It's a lot better than trying to work off that little screen on the Modus. Especially when you're trying to use the scope. Let's load the scope up. Let's compare the screens on the modus and the screen that I'm going to be working on. The modus screen is good. But that is better. So, as I say, I've got the option of powering this up on 240 volt in the box or powering it off the inverter when I've only got the power supply off the car I'm working on. But either way, I've got an absolutely cracking screen to work off, which makes a lot of difference. Pull some data up that I've uh, downloaded. See how much easier it is to read the display compared to trying to read that when you're out in the field. This was the readout I was trying to find a bad armature on a brushless motor. Let's stop that. Wrong button, wrong button. I want to leave my cursors on. I want to review it, I want to manual it. Let's bring it across. And you can see the dropouts in the, uh, the bad motor. There's one here, that's a bad armature. There's another bad one there. And these were motors off one of my uh, drones and one of the motors had been playing up, it was a bit unstable so we just did a DC volts average at 2 volts on the motor and these were the results but I was doing that out in the field but as you can see now I've got a decent screen to read my results off just thought I'd share that with you might give you an idea, you might want to try it yourself and if you're wondering how you connect the modus up to your screen there's a rubber plug down here which snap on don't cut out for you but if you take this off you can cut it out and you can use your uh, lead off your screen into the modus at the bottom and uh, this is the result you get See. 
big screen. Where you can actually see a lot of detail. And the motor screen. Motor screen as I say, it's totally workable. But it's so much nicer to have a big screen. And you might not have missed something with the big screen, so there you go. Give it a go. Didn't cost a lot of money. Just a bit of time. Enjoy.